The spring pheasant crowing count surveys were just completed. Numbers are up. Today we're going to visit with upland game biologist RJ Gross to go over all the details. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. So our spring pheasant crowing counts, their 20 mile routes are spread across the state. We got about 100 of them, uh, pretty equally divided along our, our four management districts across the state. And we run those from May 1st to June 10th every spring. We've been doing those for about 60 years, so we got really good extensive data set on those. And we'll do those, we run them three times in the survey period, and we wanna try and do one early, one in the middle, and one late. And we do that to try and get the peak crowing of, of the pheasants in North Dakota. And it's usually that middle of May, uh, but sometimes it is a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Um, we're out there half hour before sunrise, and you go every two miles, you'll stop your vehicle, get out, and you'll listen for two minutes on the pheasant crows. You'll count those and you'll repeat that 10 times, and you get an average uh, for each route that you do. Surprisingly, um, you know, with the winter that we had, the pheasant crows throughout the state were up 30%. Um, and I know, you know, the percentages when it comes to crowing counts, they, they're kind of inflated, they sound big. You know, it's smaller numbers, you know, so this year we had right over 14 and a half crows per stop that we averaged compared to last year, which was just over 11. So, and it's, it was pretty, pretty well spread out evenly across the state. The four districts that we use, the Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, and, and Southeast, were all up kind of that same, that three crows per stop, except for the Southwest, which had a really good increase of five per stop. Um, bottom line, we're back to where we were before the 2020-21 drought. Uh, so pheasants are, you know, the, the big takeaway from it is pheasants survived the winter. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of reported die-offs, things like that. You know, it worked out where, you know, yes, we had 100 inches of snow, but we did have breaks in there. We had, you know, warm-ups, things like that, that those pheasants could get out, scratch in those fields, find food. So they came through okay, and then with that snow, and the residual cover that we had from last year's wet fall. You know, we're shaping up really nice into this nesting season. I mean, it's nice and green out, the vegetation's tall. You know, knock on wood, we're not gonna get any of those, you know, big rain events, hail events for this nesting season. And I mean, optimism is high for, for a good fall. Pheasant crowing counts, it's only an index, not a total population count of rooster pheasants. You know, we're only listening for roosters, we're not counting hens, things like that. And we compare that to year to year. These routes, you know, they're comparable. We run the same routes uh, every year. Um, and it's it's just a one notch on our tool belt that we can use to track the pheasant population. And, you know, we use the crowing counts, but we also use things like our late summer roadside counts and our wing surveys. And they can kind of back up each other. And in, in that, you know, we got a really good sample. Um, and the juvenile to adult ratio was three and a half juveniles to adult. And that's really good. I mean, that's back right on par to where we were like 2007, where, you know, everyone remembers we shot almost a million pheasants, our, our heyday type of thing. Um, so it's really good to see that. So, you know, we had that really good surplus of roosters and they came through the winter just fine. We had the second worst winter on record. You know, everyone's gonna compare it to the winter of 1997, you know, but, but that one, you know, the landscape is different, things like that. You know, that was pre-CRP. And there, you know, basically we had a storm every week that was very bad, you know. And then like I touched on earlier this year, you know, we had that early snow in November, but the pheasants should have been in really good condition because if you can remember last, late summer, early fall, the insects and the grasshoppers were outstanding. So they should have been in good body condition and that definitely helped them get through all this, the, the long winter that we had. We're looking at basically the, the index of defense, pheasant density in a, in, you know, around these routes. And you know, like I said, we do that ar around the state and it's over winter survival. And you know, basically the amount of roosters that we have going into the spring and the summer breeding season. The one that we use most, uh, you know, that everyone looks for is our late summer roadside counts. That's what determines, you know, how the hunting season's going to be. That's, you know, w the same routes that we do for crowing counts. We repeat those for the brood survey, July 20th and all through August. And, you know, there we're counting every upland bird, pheasants, grouse, turkeys, um, any, anything. And we're GPSing those and we're counting also the amount of chicks that are, that are found with the birds, uh, adult to juvenile ratio, male to female. And then we'll age those those chicks too, so we can you know kind of a backup to our wing envelopes on hatch dates. We can kind of see how the hatch is going. Are we having an earlier or later hatch? 
No, Habitat's looking outstanding right now. I mean, it, it's it's amazing what, you know, a year or two from a drought, you know, people can remember springs before where we didn't have any vegetation coming in, but now, you know, with, you know, last fall we had pretty good moisture, a lot of stuff greened up, thickened up, and then obviously 100 inches of snow, that brings out some good moisture. And vegetation has grown up really well, there's plenty of bugs. Uh, we're drying out a little bit right now, uh, but I'm not too concerned, you know, there's still a good population of, of insects that are going to be there. And any day, you know, we're at peak hatch of pheasants in North Dakota. Um, so, you know, be on the lookout when you're out there driving or, you know, hanging in a field, slow down for, for those chicks. And I mean, uh, I'm very optimistic, you know, we're, we're set up really good. It should be a really good fall if, if all keeps up.